Hey y'all, Darla here with Growly Tropical. Well you guys, it is a beautiful day here in South Florida. We're at the end of February and I have got a lot of work cut out for me. I hope you guys can see okay this side yard over here. This is the south side of our property and it is a great time in the afternoon to be working over here this time of the year. And the main reason why is because that, that sun is still setting over a little bit into the south and we have an oak tree on my neighbor's property that it sits behind still. So in the middle of the afternoon, I can do a lot, a lot of things over here and that is exactly what I'm planning on doing. Y'all, there is a lot of work to be uh, done after the winter months because let's face it, here in South Florida, we have two seasons, winter and summer. We did have a little bit of a colder winter this year. Um, we had temperatures, you know, down into the uh, mid to upper uh, 30s um, on a couple of nights. We didn't get anything by the way of freezing, which usually we don't. Uh, Mother Nature did not throw a fit this year, thank goodness. But um, there were some things, while I never, I didn't really lose anything, there were a lot of things that with those cooler temperatures, um, I do grow tropicals here, so they, they did kind of lose their leaves and, or, you know, drop their leaves and just kind of, <laughs> for lack of a better term. And so I've got a lot of trimming and pruning. I've got a lot of things that I want to pull out, a lot of baskets that need to be, uh, well, I should say one basket and one window box that I need to change out. So you know what, you guys, um, I'm just going to go ahead and just get started. We're going to go to the back of this, um, this side yard. And the first thing that I'm going to work on is the, um, the hanging basket. So let me go ahead and get the camera pointed over there on that basket. And then I'll show you what I'm going to plant. Okay, y'all, here's the basket that I was talking about. And I've got a lot of beautiful, colorful things in here. And uh, just to kind of jump right in, there is a gara in the center. Now, I have never grown a gara. Um, we have a lot of it here, you know, in the nurseries right now. And I don't know, for whatever reason, I've just kind of skipped over buying the gara and it is quite beautiful. So I'm really kind of anxious to grow it and see how it performs here for me in my garden. And I'm gonna be using this in this, um, this basket as a centerpiece. It says it gets about 18 to 24 inches tall and it puts on the most beautiful, beautiful pink. There's a little birdie up there on my, on my roof and he keeps bending over and he keeps looking at me and he's distracting me. He's quite charming. Anyway, back to the Gara. It puts on the most beautiful pink spikes. Now these spikes are all spent. So what I've done is I've gone through most of them and I've kind of clipped them off and um, I'm already seeing there are a lot, a lot of new shoots, a lot of new growth on here. So I'm very anxious to get this guy planted and see how he performs for me. And if he looks anything like he, he does, well, you know, if, if it looks anything like the, the nurseries are looking, it's going to be absolutely drop dead gorgeous. So I'm very excited to, to grow this one for this first time. The other things that I have in this basket are, I have um, two dianthus. Now, I um, these were left over. I had, had uh, done a project um, with another container basket. Actually, I've got two container baskets out in my backyard by the pool and then up in our front entryway. I have lots of dianthus in those containers. And so I had a couple left over and I thought these would be really pretty to put in this basket as well. Now, the only thing with these dianthus is here in South Florida, they, they don't grow for us as a general rule through our summer months. They do much better for us. They perform their ultimate best when, um, when the temperatures are a little bit cooler. So I'm gonna go ahead and get them in now and they should theoretically be able to go hopefully through our spring here before I probably end up having to replace them um, with something a little bit more heat tolerant. But for now, I've got two um, of the dianthus. They're just as pretty as they can be. They are um, red in the center with a really pretty ruffly um, uh, pink uh, edge. And they're just really pretty and I thought it would be really pretty up against the light pink of the Gara. And then I also have um, two sweet alyssum. Now these are, I believe, the white knight sweet alyssum. These guys are, um, they're, they're mounding as well as they're going to trail. And I thought it would be a really pretty sweet uh, color of, um, of Oh my goodness, I'm drawing a blank. A sweet color of trailing white um, over this basket. And um, I, I, I've been doing that lately where I've been incorporating a little more white into my baskets and it's been looking very pretty. So anyway, two sweet, um, sweet alyssum uh, white night. And then what I thought I might do is I'm a person who likes to cram a lot into her baskets and um, I like it. I like instant impact and like instant gratification. And so what I thought I would do is um, once I got those plants 
planted up. There are five in, five all together. I thought what I would do is I've got these beautiful, beautiful, bright yellow marigolds. And I thought just to add that extra pop of color, go ahead and plant maybe two of them, one in the front here and then another one in the back. And um, I think it's just going to make that basket just look really, really super sweet. So anyway, that is what I'm going to go ahead and put together. And as soon as I uh, get it all together, we'll come back and I'll show you what the basket looks like. Okay, y'all, the basket's all finished. It turned out really, really pretty. I am in love with all the colors. I seriously underestimated how many marigolds I could put in here. I actually have one, two, three, four of them. I doubled it, actually. I didn't think I was gonna have that much room, but it turns out that I did. So it looks absolutely gorgeous, just cram-packed with all this color. Two sweet, uh, or two uh, sweet Alyssa White Knight. I've got two Dianthus. I've got two, or four rather, uh, yellow, bright yellow, of marigolds and then a beautiful gara right in the center so um, the only thing I need to do is I've got this on a drip uh, tube so that it you know gets water um, automatically I don't have to worry about it um, other than just coming over and fertilizing um, maybe once a week but I do need to come in and I need to um, zip tie because I, I don't like when the, the, the drip tube just kind of like hangs willy-nilly so up here it seemed to manage or it held with its zip tie pretty good but I need to go ahead and zip tie down here and then just make sure that um, the, the water or the hose is actually tacked into place so all the roots um, will get um, you know adequate water so anyway this is uh, number one over here all completed so let's go ahead and move over to project number two
Okay, you guys, I got a really good start over here on this side of the property. I am really thrilled with what I was able to get done. Um, there are a couple things that I have left to do, um, namely the pitch apples that are over here um, to um, on, this, on the house side. I've got these pitch apples. I do want them to be nice and tall, and there was a reason for that. Um, I really wanted it to be uh, right about fence length in the back there, and the, this fence, I think these fences are six foot tall, if I'm not mistaken, I think they're about six foot tall. And I want them to come right to maybe just, you know, just a hair, maybe like an inch, you know, below that fence line back there. So there's not a whole lot that I have to take off. I do have a purple fountain grass that's kind of nestled in there. It's sitting on top of a bird bath. I'm going to be pulling that guy out of there as well. And then the other thing is I have a cherries jubilee. What I'm going to do is let me turn the camera around and I'll show you this a little bit closer so that way you can see what I'm talking about. So let me go ahead and flip the camera around. Okay, so here is the cherries jubilee. I hope you guys can see that okay. It's back here in the corner right here. When I first put this cherry, uh, it's a mandevilla, Cherry's Jubilee is the, the name of it. And it's quite beautiful. It looks very, very, really, really in bad shape right now because it does not, it's a, it's a tropical and it doesn't like cold weather at all. But the other thing is I don't have it in the right spot. I need to take this guy out of here and um, he's right up against the house. And originally I had him on a trellis. Um, then we had to take the trellis out because it got, you know, too heavy for the trellis, but it, I'm hoping my camera can focus in a little bit here, but anyway, that, um, that was on a trellis and it did so beautifully. It, it the, the, the color, the blooms on it were just absolutely spectacular. I'm going to see if I can't find maybe a picture to pop up on um, the screen so you guys can see just how pretty this actually was, but Anyway, my point is it's in the wrong spot. It needs to be in a spot where it's getting full sun all the time. And over here, it's getting, um, you know, a full sun in the winter months, but it doesn't really, you know, it's not an active grower in the winter, winter months. And then it gets pretty, you know, I shouldn't say full shade, but it gets a lot of shade, a lot, a lot of shade, too much shade in, um, in the summer months when it really needs um, you know, when it really needs it. So I'm going to relocate it and I'm just not really sure exactly where um, that's going to be. So I will update you guys, you know, when I find, when I find a place for it, you know, where I can get it to where it's looking, you know, really nice. But in the meantime, I'm just going to let him stay there for, you know, just a hot minute. I was able to cut back pretty much um, almost everything actually over here, which is really what I wanted to do. I want to just kind of get everything good and cleaned up over here. And um, I was really thrilled that I was able to get my basket. I, you know, I don't know if you can see my basket, but you did in the beginning of this video. Um, my beautiful basket that I've got hanging. I was really thrilled to get that, uh, that guy in. And um, again, all the trimming that I was able to get done over here, the couple of the copper bushes. Um, I have a croissandra in the back that I was able, it was in, directly in the back of the fountain. I was able to go ahead and get um, that all kind of clean up. I pulled out a croton that was sitting back there. It just, it was a dark colored croton that's just never really done super well for me. It's always just kind of, it's lackluster. And I don't, you know, last year I was going to pull it out and I just kind of let it go. But I decided to go ahead and just pull it out. And the fact that he pulled out as easy as what he did tells me that maybe there might have been a little something going on with him. I don't know. But anyway, I got rid of that one entirely. Um, and then moving on down, I had another uh, cream colored, uh, cream and green colored copper bush, and then just a um, like a uh, r the rust colored copper bush on this right next to him. I was able to get him all trimmed back too. They look like sticks, but I assure you they will come back absolutely beautiful. Now let's move the camera down a little bit farther, and I want to show you something a little bit more close up. Okay, here's a copper bush that I was able to go ahead and get down. Um, I, I like them where they're really low like this because they put on such enormous amount of growth as we start getting hotter and hotter um, going into the spring months. So I really took them down low. I was very pleased that this one did not have any bugs. However, this one back here, this has started to develop, it looks like, thrips. I'm gonna, I cut a couple of leaves off and let me show you a little bit closer. If I can get in on a leaf here, if you see here, let me put this in the camera. This is what thrip damage looks like. It, there's black dots, which is usually a sign of like their excrement. And then that, um, that ugly white all over the leaf. And a lot of times they'll also do this. <laughs> let me see if I can find the one that had all the, yeah. 
here's the one where they look like they're they drive all over the leaf it's like right here they just basically you know they you don't see it on the back side you just see it on the front side i believe if i'm not mistaken they just they go on the inner side of the, like the tissue of the leaf and they just draw all over it and make an absolute mess and then there of course there's their little white um the little white they're like right here i don't know if you can see them those are all like little white flies so this thing was just full of just some some ugly a whole lot of ugly and uh, that did not thrill me at all so what i've done y'all is i went ahead and i cut him back um pretty hard and this guy right here my croton he was just full of you know scale uh, which doesn't surprise me because I have a problem with scales on my um, on my crotons. Now it's soft shell, and that's a little easier to eradicate than the the armored scale. So I went ahead and I cut him back like especially hard. Normally I don't have to do that, but he will come back, um, and I will go ahead and I will treat all of these actually both sides even though there was only bug damage on you know some of these i'm going to go ahead as a prevention only because i know that it will become a problem if i don't take care of it you know with every because they're all in close proximity to another one another and then of course i've got back here i've got another copper bush and this again was full of thrips um, as well so anyway um really really excited about getting as much done in the yard as what i was able to get done i just had the pitch apples which are directly behind the camera they're the big shrubs that are in the back corner i like to keep those nice and big primarily because I have a little, I have just a little space. Matter of fact, let me, let me show you. It's easier to show you than it is to um, explain it. So let me show you real quick. Okay, this right in here, you guys, it's just a little walkway right down here. I have a gorilla cart in way in the back, and then I just have like my stepping stone. Um, usually we try to keep this, you know, just kind of clear back here. I have an electrical panel that is actually uh right back in here and these pitch apples right here we just thought well if we put a nice pretty um you know hedge here shrubby shrubbery or hedgy shrub shrubbery hedge um that it would be um it would be nice they're a little too high i want to keep them more in line with the fence maybe just a little bit lower than the fence um, maybe by just you know an inch or so and so i'm going to knock the tops off of these and kind of square them all up and um, they're very pretty. These are, I believe these are a zone nine and warmer. These um, grow beautifully here in South Florida, but these are my pitch apples. And um, anyway, these guys need to be trimmed up really big time. They are just huge. And um, so those I have to trim up. In the back corner, or not in the corner, in the little koopy hole right here, I have a bird bath. And that was a, is a container with a purple fountain grass in it. I'm gonna pull all that out of there because when these pitch apples were first put in, they were very, very tiny. And um, it just kind of encroached all over that uh, bird bath. And I obviously don't need anything in there anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. But all in all, y'all, um, everything is really looking so much better. It's cleaner. I've got a clean slate going on. And now I can go ahead and um, I can clean out my window box right here. It needs to just, I'm going to pull everything out of there i want everything out of there i'm going to start fresh i'm going to freshen the soil up and i'm going to put something in there that's going to take um actually as we go into the uh, spring and summer months this box is going to get more shady and more shady and um it's like i said it's just been kind of a crazy this side has been really crazy for me because of it being on the south side and being under the uh, large overhang of the house um, what is up is down and what is down is up. So anyway, I'm going to be putting um, you know, some pretty things in that window box. Um, right now, I've got these beautiful Adonidia palms that I am just loving. I am so thrilled that we were able to put twins in. I've got one here, and this is the one that we originally started with, and she's just so pretty. I love it. And then we ended up going ahead and putting this one in. We originally had that one in the backyard. Um, there was a video that we, my husband and I did where we relocated him from the backyard here. And then <clears throat> moving on down <clears throat> in this corner right here, um, I've got a beautiful basket 
um, it's a wheelbarrow basket actually and I'm going to be planting him up and that'll be another video so you guys stay tuned for that video. I'm going to line it and put some beautiful things in there. Not entirely sure what I'm going to be putting in there but um, it unfortunately where the basket is, is sitting right now I had a pygmy date palm. Um, I don't know if you guys remember when we were doing the relocating of this Adonidia palm from the backyard, we relocated it, the, uh, the pygmy date. The pygmy date was in the Adonidia palm spot and we relocated it to here. But I don't know if a borer got into it or if it rotted. I'm really not sure. It, it started off doing really, really well. I was like, okay, this is great because pygmy dates are not easy to transplant. And um, we, I thought, okay, good, we're, we're doing well. And then all of a sudden, it just started. We lost one of the trunks. It was a three, three trunk pygmy. We lost one of the trunks, <clears throat> excuse me. And then the next thing you know, it was just declining. And so Robin and I went ahead and we took it out and it was just, it was best. So now I've got this whole space over here that I need to, you know, just put some pretty things in. Uh, not entirely sure, you know, exactly what, where, how <laughs> I'm going to do it all, but I've got a really good start right now. Um, turn the camera back around. Everything's really, you know, looking cleaner. So you guys, I was really thrilled that I was able to get as much done over here as I did. Got, you know, the trimming all, all taken care of over here and uh, just got a little bit with the pitch apples. Um, but all in all, I think I've got a good, nice, clean slate now where I can start putting things in. That isn't going to be an entirely, uh, you know, another video. Uh, so you guys definitely make sure that you click that notification. It will notify you as soon as I upload a video. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do by clicking on that subscribe button. And and uh, you guys, we will plan on seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.